today. All right, That's everybody, we need silence in the studio. Yeah, we're about to get hey, started. Real quick. Uh -oh. Give me 10 seconds. Hey, 10 get seconds. Quizzy, 10 seconds. Get quizzy the bathroom break. <laughs> He got the jitters. I thought that was only <laughs> in elementary school. Yeah, he got the jitters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. Is, yeah. hey, well, he has to go to the bathroom because of this. Hello. Oh, man. I don't oh, yeah. know. Oh, it's yeah. not enough. This is really heavy, y'all. Well, yeah. He brought that Let me do my workout this said, morning. Where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> We're going on a hike. I made all hey, about please. my fitness today. Yeah. <laughs> He's about, about to climb the, the tallest mountain in, in the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With so, my birthday coming up, Kat, I've been working out every I see uh, you with steadily, some nice. steadily every other day. Yeah. And I've got my pole dancing class tomorrow. Yeah. And I went went to, I've been going to the I mean I work out I'm a yoga teacher, you guys. So I do so I've always like, this is good enough because it's just you know, I teach yoga. But I'm trying to my I've got my fifty fifth birthday not coming up anything. in July. So I'm like I'm trying to be I was bomb. Say 25. Oh whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I wanna be like, you know. I want to be yeah. I'm scared of you. <laughs> oh no! Are you serious? You should do it. You should take. You should take my class sometime on Zoom. Okay. Don't um, stretch it. I have some friends. Some some friends that play sports. That uh, did hot yoga. I hot love yoga. hot yoga. Right, we, but they closed it down. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! We're about to go. We're about to go. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I love more yoga. conversation. <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> You're listening to KGPC 96.9 FM Oakland and streaming online at www.kgpc969.org. This is the Anything Can Happen show with Kenya Asa, Quezzy Dreams, and your man, Cat Fitness. Y'all, we got some local legends in the building. Local legends? Yeah, they're making, they making a huge difference wow. with our youth, the community, yes. and raising some real leaders. Can you give them a proper introduction over there, Miss Kenya? You know it. You know it. Everybody, please give a warm welcome to our guests today. We have Dwayne Akins Jr. and Lamont Robinson in the house today. Make some noise, y'all. Woo! Yes. Shout out. So it's there's three of them actually, but Tristan is not here today. So we what I want to tell you guys is that they have an organization called Wheelo. And they started it in 2010 as an avenue to engage youth through sports education, service learning, and civic involvement. So WELO is W-E-L-O, y'all, and it stands for We Lead Ours. Wow. Um, it's a nonprofit. It has a proven track record for responsible community building and development. At WELO, youth are exposed to positive, enriching environments filled with educational, community, and service-oriented activities. Activities that help build self-esteem, good communication, and strong personal Values. Let's go. Come on. Welcome, Dwayne and Lamont. Welcome. What's up, brothers? Thanks for having us. We got to hire you uh, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wherever y'all are. Like, promo video. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I want to work there. Like, <laughs> I want to go sign me up. That's fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And first and foremost, how y'all brothers feeling today? <laughs> Pretty good. Excited. Uh, it's been a long week because mm. last week was very long. We had our 12 year anniversary. Yes, yes. Parade, yes. You know, yes. Event, that. Which was awesome. Oh, incredible. And I also started my uh, doctoral class last Whoa. week. So what? I don't know who put my uh, calendar together last week, mm -hmm. but I feel the wrath this week. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, let's go. Let's go. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Congratulations, brother. Lamont, talk to us. I'm feeling good. Um, I take every day as a new challenge. I try to leave yesterday in the past and try to make things better for the future. And, you know, as long as I'm alive, breathing, family, I'm good. Absolutely. You heard that. God is good. God is good. So let's hop into it. Why We Lead Arts? Why name your organization We Lead Arts? Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Rest in peace, Lucas. 
yes. because they're going out of business now. But yes. look at Lucas Taproom. Yes, yes. No they way. did. They went out of business. Yes. I cried. No I cried. Yes. I think I cried real tears. Lucas? Yes, yes. I love some Lucas. Oh, that's wild. Oh that's my god. Women. They sure oh, did. Wow. Like, they so, were able to afford. I'm going to miss that catfish. That's scary. And it was packed out every weekend. Right. Wow. But that's that's We Lead Ours history. Uh, me, Tristan, Lamont, we got together the first Tuesday of 2010. I just finished my MBA proposal. I drafted mm-hmm. up the Language of Leaders Institute. Lamont and Tristan may have been working on the sports piece. And the cool thing about social media is me and Lamont actually went to high school together. And we had where y'all go to high school at Oakland Tech. The oh, okay. Tech, the Oakland Tech. That's probably where I know y'all live. Oakland Tech, boy, yeah. 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 my so, nephew, one of my nephews, go up there. Okay, yeah. and so, uh, me and Lamont bumped into each other in December on Facebook. I told him I was thinking about starting a nonprofit. He said he was thinking about doing a nonprofit, and he asked me to meet with him on the Tuesday. So, wow. we met up and we, we put on our work, put it together. And we just start playing around with names because wow. it was something about it. We just felt like we were going to do this and we just going to jump into this venture together. And uh, I was, I just kept trying to throw a leader in there and uh, it wasn't working. Then I think Tristan said weed. Then I was like weed. And then my mom was like ours. <laughs> and then I was like, like the in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like in the right direction. We was like, write it down. And we, at first, our acronym was instead of W E L O, it was. WLO, and then we was like, no, nah, we need to be different. We can put we in there. You don't have to be so textbook. And um, I was I was anxious to try to start a business to see what my master's in business administration can do. We pushed the paperwork, and I think within a week we was a legit business. Uh, and uh, since there, we just been on fire. Uh, grassroots organization no federal dollars wow uh we started off with a 15 uh, not 1500 a 500 dollar donation from a board member uh to host our first community event and then we received a 500 dollar donation to do our first summer camp and i'll do another r.i.p because yeah. this organization saved we lead ours life that's the oakland raiders when we first started they had this uh community program so you can buy tickets from us we earn twenty dollars off of each ticket that we sold that Ooh. first year that first year what we made like eleven thousand twelve thousand dollars in wow. ticket sales wow and that allowed us to just really make sure that we always practice fundraising being grassroots putting forth the energy the mission out there and just doing the work and my belief if we're doing the work god will bless us and we it's going to pay off in the long run isn't it beautiful how that happens though? When you're actually Damn. doing the work, doors just begin to open and yeah. yes. you don't see where they're gonna open from. But with faith and continue to go down your journey and doing the right thing. It is. Things just come out of nowhere and well, you're like, Oh, well, let me cut you a check and y'all It's not out of nowhere. Work. It's the grace of God. You know, yeah. We really <laughs> can't we really have to input this part to the story as well. So rest in peace to our angel. Of Lilo. Her name was Ethel Polk. Miss um, Ethel Polk was one of the number one supporters of Lilo. We were, man, we were young. I don't even remember how old we was. Yeah, shout out to Black Women. Yeah, we, we came to Miss Polk with a vision to save the whole Bay Area, Detroit, everybody. We came with this vision to help all these students. And Miss Polk made us go home. And write an essay. Yeah, <laughs> of nice, course, nice. we had to write an essay to prove to her why do we want to start a nonprofit. Wow! And we went home, we wrote that essay, and she was one of the huge champions in the background of getting things together. She gave us a seven hundred dollar donation in the beginning. Ooh, yeah, wow. our first, That's big man. Our first uh, summer camp. She stayed continuously connected to us throughout the duration of her here time here on Earth, and the story of Wheelo definitely would not have been as robust as it is now without Miss Richmond and Miss Pope. She was definitely she's definitely our angel now. She looks over us, and she definitely was a blessing to us when we first started. Wow! Shout out to Miss Pope. Yeah, it is still Women's History Month as well, so really appreciate you saying that sister's name, but. Let's talk about intention, right? It's obvious that y'all made a lot of progress 
And needless to say, y'all just celebrated a 12 year anniversary at that masquerade party, which was outstanding. We'll get to that. But looking at the original intention, why did you start We Lead Ours and how has that led you to where you are today? Well, we started We Lead Ours because we're, we all grew up in uh, households where our fathers were not present. And we also grew up in households to where we had to sacrifice not participating because of money situations. And I remember before starting WELO, I did my first community summer camp because I was working in an after school program and it was kids that couldn't afford to do anything. And the summer school money was all mixed up so they didn't have enough seats. And so I just recruited some kids, charged eighty dollars. I have no idea how I did summer camp with eighty dollars <laughs> a head. Yeah. Where y'all host y'all first summer? We day. we met at a Royal Park on wow. the bleachers. We met out, out, of, the way, the, out of my house sometimes, yes. Wow. And um wow. it just and I was going to do summer camp again. Then when Montenham came and one of my things was I never wanted us to become a corporate nonprofit organization that charge all these dues and fees, because I, I believe if you're a nonprofit entity, you're supposed to do the work no matter what. Uh, I don't pay myself the executive director's salary. Uh, the, the amount of money that I make doing WELO does not, does not add up to the amount of work that I do in the oh, community sure. yeah. supporting We Lead Ours. And that's important because I don't feel like We Lead Ours should be the only thing that pays me. I eventually want to just transfer to the board of to the board of directors, wow. hire executive director, mm. and lead from there and yeah. do things like Real speaking engagement, yes, uh, and all of those different things. To that, uh, I see myself doing in the future to make me successful. Yeah. So I don't really like when other nonprofits uh, use the resources to pay staff and not do programming. Right. So I always want to make sure that we do programming and that anybody can participate. If you show up, we're gonna work with you. Let us deal with the money. Let us talk to your parents. Because one of our one of our youngsters who graduated from Xavier, which where I went, uh, I remember meeting her when she was in the fifth grade and she was like, Mr. Akins, I don't think me and my brothers can participate, it costs too much. I was like, you tell your mom to come talk to me. Mm -hmm. You don't worry about the money. You a child, you enjoy being a kid. Yes. And so I really want to make sure that we did something for our kids that are those diamonds in the rough that are on the verge of going left and right. I want you to always, regardless of whatever decision you make, always remember that you're powerful, you're worth it, and that it's up to you. You don't owe anybody nothing, you owe yourself everything. Mm -hmm. So if we can do that work and bring that out of kids and see them show up later on in life, uh, that's a blessing. That's a beautiful thing, because you know, these Bay Area kids are, um very aware of money, mm -hmm. monetary things, because it's so expensive to live in the Bay Area. And they're aware of that. You know, a lot of these young people are aware that there's a lot of things they can't do because things are so expensive. And, and then what do we have kids doing? You know, we don't want them just sitting in the house on video games all day right. um, or staring at the walls. So that's a really beautiful thing. Can I ask you, what is the age range of the youth that you serve? <laughs> Now everybody. Everybody like, chuckled they, on that. So yeah. the so, youngest is four. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'll take that back. We have a two-year-old coming to tennis. <laughs> two-year-old <laughs> girl into tennis. Tennis. Yeah, she comes to tennis. Little and tiny we, racket. Yeah, she got her little tiny racket. <laughs> oh and she tried to do the Next exercise. Serena or Venus. So, yes. Oh my yeah, gosh! Wow. And yeah, so I think also to add to uh, to what Dwayne said, I think growing up in Oakland, you get an obligation. Right? I think in our generation. We had what we consider OGs. Our OGs did what they were supposed to do in raising the next generation to come back and get to open. I think when you're born here, you have this responsibility and this gift to want to give back to your community. And the way you grow up, whether you do have parents at home, whether you don't have parents at home, the, your friends are a, a representation of all the struggles and all of the successes in your life. And when you see that, you feel an obligation to come back to your community and give back and make the next generation better. And I think that through, through 
through our time of growing up, it forced our mindset to be like, how can we give back and look at some of our, you know, inefficiencies or some of the things that we wouldn't able to do or be able to be a part of and figure out ways for our kids to not have that worry and be able to be participate participants in these activities as well as expose them to newer ideas and newer activities mm -hmm. and also just let them know that you're not just have to be this drug dealer to get out you don't have to be yeah, this planting athlete. seeds yeah to, you don't have to just show them other things yeah you know we you know when we grew up things like nursing you'll be like oh that's a girl, that's a girl. <laughs> or a police officer that's i don't want to be money. i don't want, but you get older yeah. like Man, I sure wish I went to nursing school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the police the don't sound bad when they talk about $150,000. I was right. tripping, you know. Right. Um, and so just those experiences, and I think we would be doing our OGs a disservice if we didn't come back to our community and put a footprint on our community and making sure that our kids have someone to turn to because it's so often where our kids don't have nobody to turn to yeah. you know they're alone in their household some of them don't eat sometimes coming to camp sometimes talking to mr akins talking to me or just even us asking them how they doing is a break from the things that they got to do wow. daily and walk down the street they sure. have to sure. face and that responsibility if you don't take that responsibility to heart then we're doing the next generation so, yeah. so, wow. so with fitness, the fitness component, why is it so important to have that fitness component with it? I think the fitness component serves a lot of different things that you go through, right? I think from a mental health perspective, yes. I think from a health perspective, um, knowing how to channel your anger yeah. and learn how to do it the right way. Um, as an athlete, I played sports growing up in, in high school didn't have the opportunity to play as a youth because I was a bigger individual and my parents yeah, you didn't make weight. Yeah, we didn't Playing make Pop weight. Warner. Yeah, I, had, I had to run around yeah. uh, Kirk Flood yeah. with the garbage bag on. <laughs> um, and so I didn't be I wasn't able to play. My grandmother, I was raised by my grandmother and she was working late hours for the district. So if I signed myself up for something, I had to sign myself up for it. She wasn't ready to wow. know. And I think with fitness, we, we tell our kids so much to channel their energy, but we don't give them nothing to, to their outlets. Right. And Absolutely. we wonder why our kids are angry is because I don't know where to push this energy out. Right. And I think if you have a fitness mindset of knowing how fitness can help your mind, body, and soul, mm -hmm. it allows you to be able to have an energy and be able to do things positively because for us five seconds of emotion can be a lifetime of that's right. destruction that's right? right and so if you don't know how to channel that five seconds you're in trouble well right? and and it you know you really hit the nail on the head because it's not just dealing with anger right so there's so many emotions as you know i'm the the mental health person here um there's so many emotions that you can be feeling have no idea even what they are you know as as young kids they don't know sometimes what that feeling is it could be confusion it could be anger sadness depression you know there's so much depression in youth these days that's just not people think it's anger you know, um, and it could be a much deeper thing. It could be a, a cognitive disorder. It could be a learning disorder, stuff like that. And so even not just sports, but all forms of movement, I'm a movement specialist, yeah, right? Yeah, right. I'm a yoga teacher and all that other stuff. And so just moving your body can get that, you know, those endorphins going and all that other stuff in any way that you move. It doesn't have to be just sports. It could be pretty much any going on a walk. But you know. what I think is what I think is so amazing is because in our community, like we don't talk about the mental health aspect a lot right. of the time. Right. Amen. So when we're when we're dealing with stuff, when we see other people in our community dealing with stuff, we see them drinking, we see them smoking. Mm. We don't see them work talking about working out to right. get through it. Right. right? And I know when I when I flipped that switch in my personal life and went back to the roots of how to deal with those things because growing up playing sports and pushing myself in that aspect 
it was like night and day. It's like when when I'm stressed at work or whatever I'm doing in life, I don't have to pick up that that bottle of alcohol. I can go for a run. I can lift some weights. Right. And, I'm glad and I can channel that energy the same way. No, go right ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm glad that you brought up the mental health aspect as well as the video game and social media aspect. I feel like so many of our kids and our parents are stuck on social media and in this digital world yeah. that they're not even parenting their child. Wow. And that's the yeah. truth. And we have this thing going on where you got cyberbullying and so much energy on the internet that our kids they are walking into places where they just feel uncomfortable yeah they may not have a typical fight at school like we had a fight so yeah. the parents know about what's going on yes. or, and they getting bullied and yeah. getting into fights in a whole nother way and being torn down right. and that was right. also playing a big role on the mental the mental health aspect yeah. Yeah. yes and also, we have things going on inside classrooms. My dissertation is more so talking about how we have some people, not just people that are not black, but people that are educators that are, oh, yes. that are Damn bullies, something. that are bullies. Oh my gosh, and I've seen so much stuff my, on like online, yeah. on social media, just because these kids are recording these people. Yeah. These yeah. kids are recording these educators video on their phones recording these educators bullying sometimes hitting you know it pushing. It's crazy. Crazy. But, but check this out not too so two weeks ago um uh, the bsu at my son's school right is that put, bsu black student union yeah put it put together a performance right mm -hmm. and they were getting pushback from staff at of the course school, <laughs> saying like Okay, why are you doing this now? It's yeah. not February. Oh! The, kids, the kids was like, oh, no. get back in your cage, Negroes. Oh my like, God. They're getting that kind of pushback <laughs> from the staff at the school. And they was like, well, we're doing it now because every month is Black History every Month. Like, month, it don't matter. Yes. Why are you saying we can only do it during February? Dang. Right? Uh, wow. That's little yeah, things yeah, like that. Wow. And staff, and another thing before we, we move on, is just like staff talking about how they were surprised that it was that organized and that these kids were oh, able how dare they? to yeah. put this kind of collaboration <laughs> together. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, you, this you, is the area, right? This yeah. Area. But see, that starts, that starts with the parents and the programs like We Lead Ours. Mm. When you build up your young people and you say that you can do anything that you want to do and you set a standard. Yeah, they're going to rise like, up to the occasion. Like, I went to a historical black college. Me too. And which one? Could, we I went to Xavier University. Okay. Xavier. Yeah. And so you couldn't do nothing. You couldn't be a uh, lead of student government in a fraternity, sorority, without a 3.75 GPA. And that was basic. You still might not get picked because you didn't have a 3.0 something GPA. Ooh. What that coming from the Oakland Unified School District and 2.0 and now you got zero point somethings walking across the stage with a diploma i'm like wow. that is that's set not, that's based that's setting the bar low and that's that's not holding our young people accountable and this is just not black youth this all you oh, like geez. that's not holding yeah. them accountable they're going to get to a university and realize Oh, you can't throw you can't throw a tantrum in this classroom. This right. professor will send you to the board of yeah. educators Get and you'll be out. petitioning <laughs> to come back to class. Yeah. And so we have to be realistic about what we're giving our young people. And we have to tell them that you're tenacious and you can do anything. Right. And it's important to preach black history because a lot of our kids, they don't know it. They know about brother Dr. Martin Luther King okay. Jr. That's it. That's all they, they know. They know about they Harriet story. Tubman. No, yeah. But story. they it's know so about Barack story. Obama, but yeah. they don't know about all of the in between the and the before. Right. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of it's a lot of history not being taught in schools. And Absolutely. Well, because it's so threatening for you know, especially the anti-critical race theory people and stuff like that. They don't want they don't want the truth. Any, any you know, the truth is not terrifying. You know, right. the truth should not be scary. But if you're if we're not in control of educating our youth about real historical figures in our community, then who's going to do it? But the yeah, truth yeah. changes the narrative. You know I mean? know. To say the least. It changes, it's they a power like shift it. with truth. Yeah. That's, that's, right. why, that's why we brought these brothers in here today. 
Right. And Joanne, I want to ask you, because I heard something at the, the masquerade, we'll get to that. But I heard you also have a financial literacy course. Is that true? Oh, yeah. So our financial literacy program, it's it's a spin off of sexual education. So it's sexual the, education. It's a spin off of it, but it's the legit money club. So it's a peer education mm-hmm. club, anti violence, anti drugs, pro entrepreneur. Wow. The goal is to teach those interpersonal skills because I believe everybody should have a legit side hustle. Everybody should be an entrepreneur. Yeah. You can be making <laughs> yes. you can be making seven figures from your day job, but your you phone. still need to have a side hustle. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we yeah. need to teach our kids that all of that energy that you put into trying to figure out how to sell drugs and doing all this stuff, you can be putting those same skills yeah. towards, it's oh, you like, the, you, like the, you like to draw paintings. Okay, wow. people will pay for your art. Yeah. Don't give people your art for free. That's that's, that's right. your that's your meal right there. You charge. <laughs> sure Even if you charge is. people a dollar, you charge. Absolutely. And that's right. powerful. So, people do need to see it so much easier than we think. Even what you said, that's why people think, Oh, I need to be an official. Like, I need to have a cosign. I need to be in a museum. Like, no, you can literally just pass out your art. You can take a picture of your art, put it on social media. That's how I sold books when I got into poetry. Like, it really is that simple. And I love each other. Yeah, that's, that's why they got to learn how to use the social media right. Oh, social yes. media. These, I tell the young people all the time, these are business tools. Yes. They were not right. invented for you to sex <laughs> and do all this stuff and Nonsense. cyberbullying. Yeah. They were. They started off with realtors being in different locations wow. and they wanted a camera phone so that they can share pictures so that they can bid wow. on property. That's where this stuff started from. It, it started for you to be able to make business. But of course, humans, we have <laughs> evolved it. We have evo- evolved it into <laughs> the next day. Right. So now we have to teach it. But I believe that should be that should be the English class in in middle school. You yeah. should be teaching young people how to write on social media how to get your point across in 150 characters and how not to be come, come off as threatening and remember everything is not for the internet i can be mad at lamont but Amen. my job is not to get on our business page and, and talk about my business part, partner and vice versa and why i mean that's what i tell because i work with a lot of kids and i have a 12 year old but he's not on social media um wow. but um i have been working with kids my whole adult life and i'm a retired social worker in alameda county we see you frank and um (laughs) hey shout out to frank clayton and um hey frank and um what i tell the young people the teenagers especially um is that you nobody needs to see you twerking online on instagram because the internet is forever and anything can be screenshot or saved by anyone and you know the things that i see young people doing now i'm no i'm not i'm I'm very far from conservative but you are under the age of 18 put your shirt on you know like just like why you know and so, so there has to be some sort of outside entity um that is teaching them that there are other things to do with your life right. and other ways to use those Guidance. tools. Yeah. And, and that's an excellent point. And what I, what I love about the idea of the legit money club is that one of the things that I personally preach is, especially around the pandemic, everyone was on social media saying, be an entrepreneur, yeah. own your own mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. If you ain't did this and you wasted you time, wasted time. Right. and I'm like, <laughs> well, that's not true. Right, right. You know, we tell our kids all the time, be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur, but who's showing them? Right. right. Exactly. Right. Right. We're showing them the steps. We're telling them to do something, but we're not giving them the tools. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so if our youth is looking at current social media, current ways to make money illegally and illegally is being publicized right. on social media um, and it's fast money, they're going to think that what you're saying to me is, go start a, a legal enterprise, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And so when we preach these messages, we have to also understand that our youth have no idea the steps. Right. And so what I love about the Legit Money Club is that it's teaching them the steps right. and it's giving them the toolkit for them to be able to start a successful business and sustainable business. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we didn't mention that just made me think about it today, when we first started We Lead Ours, we started off at 
uh, was he at? Um, Reach, Academy. Reach Academy. Reach, Reach Shout Academy. Out to Reach. But it was three adult individuals who understood the sacrifice. And our first contract was twenty-five thousand dollars. No, it was but it was no, it was three thousand uh, quarterly. Oh, mm -hmm. so we had three thousand dollars quarterly invoice <laughs> to split three ways. Sure. So we was working Ooh. for wow. Penny. pennies, wow. right? Yeah. Um, but it, but we knew that if we spoke with our heart, we reached the heart, we did what our passion was, and we never got into we need ours for money. We knew what our mission was. We right. wanted to make an impact on our community. And that's how the money comes. That's where the money comes. Right? We tell you all the time, do what you're passionate about, and you'll Man. you'll be fruitful for the rest of your and life. You don't have to worry too. about it. Yeah. Um, and those same kids from Reach Academy, they follow us on social media. Wow. Uh, three of them was at the at the event at the masquerade, and wow. they stay connected. And the ones that stuck with our program is going pretty good for the yeah. Wow. And we even have some interns that we employed, adopted, we adopted <laughs> that now actually went from interning for us in high school, going off to college, wow. coming back, and now work into the school district under me. Are, so yeah, yeah, that, I'm gonna cut y'all off. This, this is incredible, right? We actually got a half show break. We're gonna play some quick music, get everybody a chance to get a breather, but definitely stay tuned, y'all. You're listening to KGBC 96.9 FM Oakland and streaming online at www.kgbc969.org. This is the Anything Can Happen show, and we're gonna take a quick music break, y'all. Okay. So we can talk. We're uh, rolling. Yeah, that was good. It's really good. That was good. We're going to talk about the past 30 minutes. Yeah. We're going to talk about the masquerade. I know. I want to hear about it. You keep, yeah. you keep mentioning mm -hmm. it. I'm like, Jesus. See, days I've been on a craze, man. Got me on lock. You can't hollow on a holiday. Yo, what's wrong with you? You can't call me up on holiday. You know that I'm going to say. Text me when you on your way. Listening to KGPC 96.9 FM Oakland and streaming online at www.kgpc96.9.org. This is the Anything Can Happen show with Kenya Asa, Quezzy Dreams, and your man, Cat Fitness. That was Courtney Bell with Mirror. Man, that slaps, y'all. It really did. Get your spirit right, y'all. Yeah, Come on. That was fire. It yeah. really was. 
we're gonna hop back into this conversation because these brothers is gassing today. <laughs> and if somebody they doesn't jewels. tell me about this masquerade, oh, absolutely. But first, about the party, <laughs> yeah, let, let's do a quick reintroduction, right? Yes. So, in the studio today, we have Dwayne Atkins, 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 Dwayne Atkins, and Lamont Robinson from We Lead Ours, the co founders. They brought us some incredible information about the purpose of their organization, how they got to the bag without actually chasing the bag, and how they're inspiring the youth. So, with that being said, we're in the second half of our show, and we need to hear about this masquerade. Dwayne, talk to us, brother. Oh, so that was supposed to be my birthday party, but COVID-19 kind of kept us kept us pushing it away, and we wanted to shoot for that to be our 10-year anniversary. anniversary. But I decided that we were just going to host this event, and we was going to make sure that we pulled it off. And I just wanted to do something fun and get people dressed up and I just always had this kind of uh, dream about acting like I was Bruce Wayne and Batman when the Joker oh, came and yeah. kind of uh, crushed this party. Hey, that was crashed the party. So um, yeah. I just thought it'd be something nice and creative and different and mm-hmm. not such a party. And I didn't want to do a sit down gala because right. I like to be social and moving around. So I thought a masquerade, a masquerade art auction sort of would be perfect. Oh, nice. And it was. It really was. And I, I attended on behalf of anything that happened to show. And oh, yeah. my goodness. Come on, you held it down uh, for it. I yes. held it down, yes. down for the team. But man, there were some heavy hitters in the building. It was, and I swear to you, every single person, I met a few people there that I know, but every single person I talked to, I say like 80% of them, oh, Dwayne invited me. Dwayne invited mm-hmm. me. And one of them was, I mean, Lauren Taylor. I know some of y'all have heard that name. He, he's announced his campaign, right? Yes, he has. Yeah, so Lauren Taylor, as the Anything Can Happen show, we don't officially sponsor anybody, but he is running for the next mayor of Oakland. Congratulations to Lauren Taylor. Also met the, the gentleman, is he running for Alameda County? District Attorney. District Attorney. Seth Stewart. Seth Stewart, black man, running for Alameda County District Attorney. This is a big deal. And I met both of these brothers, looked them in the eyes, shook their hand, and I said, hey, who invited you here? Oh, Dwayne, Dwayne Akins. No big deal. So Dwayne is a, Dwayne's a heavy Where is the man? I'm just doing my job. I feel like it's. I feel like <laughs> it's important. Humble. I feel like it's important for nonprofits, especially grassroots business owners, to be able to have conversations with our local electors mm-hmm. and be able to work hand in hand with them because they need our help in order to do a great job and or and also in order to impact the communities. And one of my practices is always to make sure that our young people get the chance to interact with our politicians. Mm. Since we've been doing WeLo, I just literally always email, call somebody, and they show up. Like the first one that showed up that we first started interacting with, I would say it was Desley Brooks when she was yeah. city council yeah. for District 6. And I had a meeting with her, and at first Desley was like, what is he coming to ask me for? <laughs> and I was like, look, I just want to let you know that I'm out in District 6. I do a lot of community cleanups. Here's what my org got going on. We have summer camp. We'll be cleaning up Burke Carter. We'll love for you to come talk to the kids about being a woman of color in politics. Wow. And she showed up at the park. She showed yeah. up. She showed up at the park. <laughs> she would, yeah. I mean, I like that. Uh, she, will, she will show up. Yeah, she that's you. That's you. And speaking of, of politics, at least locally speaking, what support have you gotten from the political sphere, at least like here in Oakland or maybe in the larger Bay Area, have you gotten any kind of support? Oh, great, great support. Uh, locally, statewide, wow. nationally, a lot of uh, supporters. A lot of my friends are politicians. Uh, I've, I've, before, uh, well, not before, but while doing WeLo, I actually jumped on Organizing for Action, which was Barack Obama's uh, super PAC when it was organizing for America, but they changed up organizing for action yeah. once he got elected yeah. and they kept the energy going and they had yeah. a fellowship. And so that in doing the fellowship, it really showed you how to interact with politicians. And when I tell you, went to a private meeting on the top floor of Salesforce and got to meet like these heavy hitters. Yeah. And they pour into Wheelow. They actually support some of them are private donors each year to support support us. Uh, one of the coolest things, right after that Barack Obama meeting, uh, one of one of his big time supporters out in wine country, they met me there, and his wife, 
his wife and himself, they pretty much was one of these red and blue wheelie R C shirts. Mm. They went and bought one t-shirt and spent two thousand mm. dollars. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. And so I was like, oh, we don't even really need to sell no more. <laughs> <laughs> But uh well, they are selling our shirts yeah. for a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're famous networking, now. networking networking is critical, it's key. I also coach a lot of other up and coming nonprofits and I share with them like if you in it just to get a big grant, then I don't want you to do this work. Right. And I can't help you because I'm it's not real. I can write a grant, but I am not a grant writer. I hate writing grants. I gotta write one when we get off of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like. But, hey, grant uh, writers, reach out to our people. Yes, for sure. We love some grant writers. But uh, but yeah, it's 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 the networking, it's doing the work through love and passion. And when you're doing that, people see it and other opportunities open up for you in your personal ways. Uh, like so by us just adopting a space in East Oakland, that turned into me joining the board of directors for yeah. Oakland Beautiful, did that for six years, served as an Oakland Parks and Rec- Recreation Advisory Commissioner. Wow. Now I'm on the Sugar Tax Advisory Commission, serving as the chair, wow. and on BART Title VI Environmental Justice say, Committee. To, so, uh, yeah, I, go for it. I was going to say, what's the, the the Latino brother that oversees Park? He retired last year, a couple years ago, right before COVID, with the glasses short, kind of stocky guy. I can't think of his name right now. For, for Oakland, that oversee, he was uh, over Parks and Rec. I remember it was. Oh, I got him in my phone. I got to look him up. I was training yeah, him that one. Look him up. We got to get in touch yeah. with him. But, Glenn, I, I want to ask you real quick. You mentioned networking. And that's incredibly important, especially myself as an entrepreneur. Actually, I believe all of our co are entrepreneurs uh, and business owners, but networking is so crucial. And I was actually listening to Eric Thomas, and he was saying that, you know, the reason that he went to pursue a PhD is to gain the language, right? Like the language of the people who are in these boardrooms so he can understand how to communicate with them. What would y'all recommend when just speaking to somebody who's from East Oakland? And not to, I mean, but may not have the right education the right opportunities the right connections how would you recommend that they get into those rooms that y'all have been invited into you want to go first you want oh. me to go? i'll go short because i talked a lot okay. already so right. that way one at a time one so time. i tell people me growing up here I've always been a party animal I took, i've been throwing house parties <laughs> since I'll that masquerade, i've been throwing house parties since the sixth grade and wow. so I feel like one of my super skills, and I tell everybody who looks at a super skill, mm-hmm. and you play off of that in spaces. So mine, I'm a, I'm a networker. I love yeah. to bring people together. So I play on that mm-hmm. whenever I'm trying to do something, not trying to manipulate, but I'm just yeah. using my superpowers in order together. to get people on board with my mission and vision yeah. and what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And learning to work through a collaborative lens when you get folks there it can't all just be about Dwayne. what do you need what do everybody in here need to feel comfortable to feel like they can be a part of this so and early on i i was a little arrogant so i did used to be like it's all about Dwayne, 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 Dwayne. but growing and learning and learning to recognize your strengths as well as your weaknesses that was one of my weaknesses being being arrogant yeah, yeah being a little ego aside. Right. Yeah. And so once you learn how to do that, you're winning. And then I tell the kids all the time, if we were talking in urban language, I'm the plug. Mm. <laughs> That's what's up. You always be the plug in your uh, I think I think everyone has their their niche, right? I don't think everyone needs to be great at everything. Mm-hmm. I think I always preach to our young folks that the folks that you're in the classroom with, you never know. Mm-hmm. And so it's good to have good relationships because as long as you don't do folks wrong, you're humble and you know how to apologize, Yeah, you'll always be able to have good company and be able to come back to folks, which brought me and Dwayne together because we separated for a while with college and we was able to come back together and create an organization. And I feel that when you tell somebody, what do they do? Do what you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. And if you can be passionate about what you do, it's comfortable talking about it. Yeah. You know, I don't really do things whether it sound 
great financially, whether it's like, oh, you can make it big. I don't do things and I stay away from things that I'm not passionate about because now I have to pretend or convince right. and try to be something, and try that, to be something that I'm not. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not here to convince you. And I think that if we tell folks when you're in these rooms, if you are doing what you're passionate about, it's easy as a regular conversation. Right. You know, simple as this interview is, is not, it don't feel like an interview, it's like a conversation, yeah. right? And so if you're able to have that conversation, and my grandmother told me this when I was a kid, and I think I said it earlier, you speak from the heart, you reach the heart. Mm -hmm. And yes. so when folks see how genuine you are and how passionate you are about what you believe in, mm -hmm. then they listen. Some things that yeah. we, we heard from you, real recognize, real like that. Yeah, yeah, real recognize, real. Right. If you live in your truth, mm -hmm. at that point, at that moment in your life, people will see that in you. They'll right. see that light in you. Well, and, and also, support that light. also in the in authenticity turns people off. Mm -hmm. You know, you can if you're in a conversation or like like uh, Quincy was mentioning, um, you find yourself in the room, right? You don't want to be somebody who people are thinking, you know, this does not come off as authentic. You know, and people can always tell yeah. when you're just trying to you know, spit something at them that's just not real, it's not you, or you're just doing it for the wrong reasons. I remember even when I was in, uh, when I first started my yoga teacher training, my first yoga teacher training, they had us teach something we know to each other. And I'm a makeup artist, so I taught my partner how to put on fake eyelashes. Wow. That was what I taught, because I was like, I, I know that I know this, I can teach you how to do this, you know, and and it's it's it kind of sets the tone for what do you know? What's your passion? And then that carries off into other things that you might teach or other conversations that you might have with with anybody out there. Yeah. And just authentic self is classic. And yes. we have to sometimes doing this work, you get into academic spaces mm -hmm. and. I feel like we're a non-traditional nonprofit, regardless to our degrees and stuff, we're still non-traditional because the way that we started up our business, oh, we wow. pitched and tossed, yeah. right? So, and then being black males. So yeah. we tend to come off as, they the muscle, but they don't really know what they're talking about. <laughs> they don't read our bios and stuff like that. So sometimes individuals that aren't from here, and I'm not even gonna say look like us, Aren't mm -hmm. from here. Mm -hmm. Oakland is a culture. Yes, yeah. Oakland is. is a culture. It's a, it's a subculture. Yes, yeah. You can be black, white, Asian, Mexican, yeah. etc. If Whatever. you're from here, you got this cert open swag. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. these kids can feel that when you walk into their classroom, into their space, yeah. and you're talking all of this textbook stuff. And what what uh, you, you spoke about earlier? How do you make that relatable? Yeah. They need. It don't mean that you got to use cuss words and try to sound like them, but it yeah. you need to talk to them from a human space to where they understand and they feel you when you're up there proctoring or entertaining them because teachers and educators you are entertaining. And I think that also speakers. I think yeah. <laughs> I think also it's good to recognize the things that you go through is giving you the experience to where you want to go. Right. So the, we, we look at how we navigate going to school. Right. Think mm -hmm. about all the challenges that you have for a young person to walk from home to school. But if we can fester all those emotions and those gut feelings, you know, when I walk on this corner and I see a bunch of people hanging at the store, yeah, that's all yeah. I'm not being a punk, but I'm going to walk across the street because yeah, right. I don't want no problem. Right? right. And so those are emotions in natural uh Things that your body develop yes. that you can use in business, skills. those survival skills that you can use in business mm -hmm. and identify with somebody is, you know, not bull crap in you basically. Right? Yeah, you you know? sound just Learn like feel the vibe. You, mm -hmm. you brought up a good point. Something that we, we do typically in summer camp, we partner with the Oakland Police Department <laughs> and they have a wow. ramp, they have a circle group with our young people. And just talking about street smarts and de-escalation de-escalation uh, tactics with the police right wow. and they really talk to the young people about look you shouldn't be walking with your cell phone 
and yeah. your earbuds in and yeah. you're in an unfamiliar area and you don't know this place. Yeah. Yeah. Your car slipping out. And of right. And so yeah. they do a lot of those different type of talks. Uh, also talk about like, we'll have to fight another day. You may be innocent, but you putting up a big fight yes. right now based on what's going on in the media, you might just want to, you might just want to will to fight another day. That's we need your voice to be able to tell the story of uh, what happened what versus you just being another statistic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. Many. yeah. yeah. Believe it or not, y'all, we almost come to a close. We do got about a little less than 10 minutes. So there's this one question that we got to get to. And that's, so the, the main purpose of our show is to inspire people to follow their dreams, right? And it's apparent that y'all have done that and are continuing to do that. But looking at the last 12 years, right, what would you say has been the biggest success and the biggest, I'm not going to say failure, but like lesson that you've learned in the last 12 years? You want me to go first? I go first. Okay, you go first. Above all the, you know, success that other folks outside of our organization see, I think for me personally, our biggest success is watching our young men and women in a grocery store with their families being productive, coming back, talking about where Mr. Rank is at, Mr. Robinson, you know, wanting to connect in their community wanting to do better and checking yourself amongst each other. You know, the, the accolades and the things that we get, we're not really, we're, we're, we're humble because we don't really celebrate those things. We, we, we don't really say that it's us and this is why we're doing it because it's, we're not doing it for hand claps. Right. Um, we understand that they are necessary, especially when you want to get in the rooms of certain folks to be able to have uh, history so that they can be able to give you the tools that you need to be able to do the work that you do. But I know for us, just watching our young people just transform and become productive citizens in the community and being able to give them jobs and 12 years, right? Wow. I mean, with 12 years without no grants, yeah, no financial, like, here go $100,000, yeah. here go a million dollars, start your program. Where a lot of organizations have that luxury to be able to start with this money. We started with <laughs> grass and roots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's so dope yeah. about that is once you do get that financial back, mm -hmm. the things that you can do with that. Right. Because you man. took it out of the mud. You right. was like, man, we made that fifty dollars a kid. You appreciate right. it. Right. 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 Now yeah. I got a thousand dollars per kid. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I, so let, let's do it just in the interest of time. Dwayne, if you could tackle the lesson, like the biggest lesson you learned. The biggest lesson learned was to prioritize finances. And oh, think of well, set, that again. prioritize that again. finances uh -oh. and uh, sacrificing. Like when we're the heads of the organization, we have to sacrifice. Yep. in order to make sure that our people are good. Because if your people are not good, they're not going to rock with your organization. <laughs> sure they gonna, and they're going to be talking about you on social media. So uh, our, contract, our contractors, they can say whatever they want, but they can never say, mm -hmm. we low let them be hungry. <laughs> they can never say that. Yes. Like, um, I I go hard, Levac go hard, everybody goes hard to make sure that our contractors are taken care of, have access to perks. But that, uh, when I say uh, prioritizing the finances, set fundraising goals and think of grants as hypothetical money. So the hypothetical hypothetical money is if we get it that'll oh, be yeah. great but i don't really oh, have okay it. We, okay we're not gonna okay. budget right okay. now we're not so gonna make money. so okay. so yeah it's a blessing so yes. if a bank give me twenty thousand dollars today that don't yeah. mean that they got to give it to me in six months so right. think about <laughs> that as that's not a part of the long-term plan that's a part of what you're doing now and how can you grow this money to make it work oh my i think goodness. that's why the legit money club is going to Bro, yes. we we gonna yes. talk. That was an incredible response. It sure was. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm glad he went second because I don't know how it was. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a heavy hit, bro. Can I ask you guys what what you have coming up next? Like, what is next for you for your organization? Maybe even for you individually. What's coming up? 
we definitely have summer camp coming up. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, personally, uh, Monterey University, uh, I'm going to speak there uh, on a black male, well, a man of color education panel. That'll be on, on April 20th. So Yo. I'm excited about that. And in two years, the city of Oakland is having, uh, uh, they're looking for a new person for uh City Council at large. Not a new person. They look for mm. Dwayne. They and so they are. I'm officially, I officially said it last week that I'm running. Wow. So I'm running for office. First, yo. You heard it here first. Yes. Anything can happen, show me. And I should be a doctor in 2020. Should be. What? Will be, my brother. Will yes. be a doctor. All, All right, Dr. Aiken. Lamont, Lamont, what's up? Wheelo. Uh, <laughs> hey, that, no, that, one that, thing that's about Wheelo is we adopt to our environment. And so right now, like Dwayne said, we're currently working on how to create a bigger and better summer camp, especially coming out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely have other things in our professional life that we're that allows us to use some of those professional tools to bring to uh, our youth and do more. Uh, me personally, just growing, you know, make, you know, making sure that I'm here to support in any way and follow the one his lead, regardless to where he wanna go, I wanna be the one that's there and that's his number one supporter. Uh, and it's protector. I'm very protective of making sure that muscle. Way, you, you can know, tell if y'all not in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm Tupac he should be right. <laughs> uh, no, so, we're not, we're not, we're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> not not sure. Not sure. 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 Sugar sugar. <laughs> but um that, that's it. Um, I think that we're in a we're in a great space. Um, Dwayne has definitely took the bulls by the horn and put us in other realms that are creating a lot of different opportunities. And my job is to really make sure that when we are in new spaces and we navigate those spaces, that we're doing it with a clear mind, sound, and that you know that we need ours in the right direction. But you're not going to lead us to the wrong direction either. Um, oh, so, that's that. Yeah, because I want to spend all the money on. Yeah, you like no, 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 no. <laughs> no. 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 Okay, Alex, yeah. Alex, Alex. Yeah. Wow. Well, this we, we got to cut it right there. We yeah. definitely gonna have y'all back in the studio. Thank you. We need ours. Dwayne Aiken. We gotta get their social media and website. Oh, absolutely, and absolutely. Yeah. Where can Where? people find you? Yeah. At W E L E A D O U R S. That's on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. At We Need Ours. At We Need Ours. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Website? And, oh, yeah. You can go to our website, www.weadours.org. -E -E mm. And you can become a community donor by donating $12 a month. Mm. And we're asking for 12 this year because we're celebrating 12. 12 years of service and next year we'll be asking for 13 because we'll be celebrating 13 years of service so wow. make sure you support us by visiting our website and reach out inbox us if you want to uh, continue this dialogue or learn a little bit more okay and you got three at least three new donators today let alone our listeners but thank you all so much for listening to another incredible episode of the anything can happen show with cat fitness quests and dreams and Kenya Asa, a.k.a. Ruby MP. Tune in every single Thursday on Instagram Live. That's at ACH.show on Instagram Live. Also, catch us on KGPC 96.9. Like, comment, follow, subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace. Peace. Wow. That was good. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Man, we could have, that was a two part episode. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that, that is the truth. That's the truth. No, that, that, was a, that was a good little, little teaser. So, what year y'all graduate from Tech? 2000. 2000? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so, you still up there with the kids? You know, Sid? Sid, that's a. Uh, Bass. Little Sid. Wait, you talking about. Right now, Sid Bass. Yeah, that went to take with us. Well, Sid is his daddy. His daddy, Sid. Yeah, Sid. Sid. Sid, he played football. Yeah, Sid. Like football. You Sid. know, Sid and uh, Duke. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
Yeah. I never knew that that was going to go. He got no, like that seed there. Okay, got it. Yeah, little yeah. seed and then yeah, the seed. seed. And then it, big, big seed. Because his daddy, uh-huh. we like brothers. Man, we see him play football together. Yeah, I'm yeah. married to I'm married to uh, his cousin. Oh, okay. yeah, that's why I was like, I the know y'all. So small. Come on, we family. <laughs> we family. Yeah, I was like, yeah, man. Y'all got to do the drop now. Oh yeah, we got to do a but quick I'm drop. Go, um, because I'm part illegal. Right there. Make sure my car is still there. Yeah, man, that's small. Oh, she got it towed. Huh? She said, she said is that your car part? She said, like, he got a tough. <laughs> oh, hell no. Nah, she got nah. a tough. Yeah, man. Nah, Sid is my guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me and him, we played football all four years in Tech. Oh, y'all had Kevin Nichols? Oh, Kevin Nichols? Yeah. Everybody knows Kevin Nichols. Is he a. He's he a, a also. Yeah, he's a, he's a big time networker. Yeah. Networks, networks. I'm oh, gonna, and you got Kim right there next to you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is the real deal. Yeah, so we I was talking this. about uh, Robert the Villa. Yeah, sure. I know Jason Mitchell. I don't yeah. remember. I don't think Robert I Robert the Villa might Dillard. not have been in. You know, he was in Parks and Rec because Parks and Rec was, was ran exactly by right. uh, Audrey. He's short little man. Is he cool guy, glasses, chunky. Yeah. Did he work? Yeah. In yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. retired I'm like two years ago. I didn't, I didn't mean that. Was he at a certain center? Or? Or? Um, right. Right. Yeah. 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 Mike so Hammock. Mike Hammock. Mike Hammock. Mike Hammock. No, Mike Hammock. Oh, yeah. Mike Hammock was the, the head. Well, Nick Nick uh, Nick, to Nick Audrey, Williams. Nick got Audrey job. Right? Yeah, he's like the, 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 the lead. Yeah, yeah. And then over the actual parts right now is Micah Hammett, but her daddy, uh, he's on the board. He's on the board. He's on he the was there before. He's on the board Oakland. of directors for Oakland Parks and Rec Foundation and on the Sugar Tax Commission. Yeah. With me. So you might be something with Parks and Rec, but they got they different that divisions. Probably, some yeah, yeah, divisions. Yeah, yeah. Like even with her being the lead, uh-huh. when you want to talk about the field, you got to go somebody else. Yeah, because yeah, I remember it's, it's for them. Mm-hmm. Where he, next, oh, sorry, yeah. No, no, I was gonna say because I remember when Jason got promoted. Then he took some position or was over something because he was over Parks and Rex at one time. I probably got to see Spence. Yeah. I probably met him if you saying he retired two years ago. Yeah. He might Last and short little Mexican guy. If, huh? you, if you put up on LinkedIn, he might be on there. Uh, he probably yeah. for sure. Yeah. When's our next event? Next event. Summer camp? What? Oh, no. no. Well, we got like, Earth Day cleanup. We got Earth Day cleanup. Like events that we, if I wanted to come and support an event, like anything like that. Sir, if you want to clean up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be an Earth Day cleanup. Okay. Earth Day cleanup. What uh? When where? That's going to probably be uh, either a Royal Park or Brookdale Park. I'm waiting for the city to tell me which one they want me to be. We well, want to do a Royal. Because yeah. right now, right now we are in the schools. Yeah. So the way is yeah. heading our program, where a lot of our school opportunities be like, like during the school, like, yeah, inside the schools, school, yeah. and then you know, hopefully. You know, then after that, we transitioned yeah. to out of the schools. And of course. Well, y'all, y'all doing amazing, man. This is, I, I was shocked that I hadn't heard of y'all before. And I see, like, because y'all went to work in the schools. So it's more like in house. So, yeah, yes. That's incredible, man. And um, doing that event, uh, the speaking event you're doing, is that open to the public? Yeah, I posted, it's on my social media page. I posted yeah. on IG. Yeah. Oh, I can, oh, I'll drop you guys. I can just drop yeah, you. Can share it to the ACH page. I was going to say, too, whichever one you need. Which one of y'all want to do the drop for the, uh, the show? So, drop is just essentially, hey, you're tuned in to the ACH show. This is whoever is doing the drop. Naming y'all organization. Yeah, y'all both could do it. We can both do it at the same time. Yeah. All right. What's the, uh, what's the words? Uh, or just the ACH show. ACH. Yeah. Or anything can happen show. You yeah. tuned into anything can happen show. This is and then give y'all names, name y'all organization, and then tune in. <laughs> yeah, essentially tune in. Felicia, let us know when you're ready for them to do the drop. Hey, let me know when they're ready. When they're ready, just let me know. Okay. Uh, what's, give me the names again. It's Cat. Uh, Cat Fitness. 
place to drink. Yeah, you can just say anything can happen, show. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. About the butcher up some days. Yeah. So, Wait. Well, you got it doing you good? Or, or, you say you. So, I just, you're listening to the Anything Can Happen show, or you're listening to We Lead Ours on the Anything Can Happen show. Today, we're talking about how to lead our people, whatever it is. Yeah. Put your tagline. How to build black, black, black leaders. Uh, and then yeah, you guys are live every Thursday? Uh, so you, and you don't have to say that. Okay. You don't have to say it. So just like, to, how do they end it? Just like tune in. Tune in. Yeah, just tune in. So you're listening to We Lead Ours on Anything Can Happen show. Today, we're talking about how to lead our community. Tune in. Oh, you jumping over. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. All right. Hey, you know, it's not like one time you can uh, you can oh, retake though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just bring bring energy to it. Because you know who you remind me of? Uh, Jamari. My boy Jamari, one of my best friends. Y'all just, at the yeah. gym? Huh? That was Jamari. Where do you guys do it? Huh? Where are you from my area now? He's from Richmond. Oh. Uh, Did she get a thumbs up? Oh, thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, What's up, good people? You listening to We Lead Ours. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's it. All right. Thumbs That's up good. Uh, uh, hey, you uh, put the thumb down. Put the thumb down. Put the thumb down. Y'all can practice. Yeah. Y'all can practice. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you want to do like, hey, listen, 